You know, people say, Joe, how did you go from Skid Row to CEO? I found the thing that, that kept me hungry. One way you accomplish anything in life is you get into, you get into relentless action. Uh, I didn't do one big thing overnight. I, I simply stayed in action. The thing I, I talk to young people and I talk to my daughter every single day is we live in an effort-based world. It doesn't matter how you feel. It only matters what you do. I believe that inside each and every one of us is an unlimited, untapped potential. And so I urge you, graduates, to find the thing that you're passionate about. Find the thing that fires you up. Find the thing that wakes you up in the morning, that gets your little feet moving towards that thing that you feel is worthwhile, towards your push for change. Because when you begin to access and, and move forward in relentless action, that's when the world begins to unfold in extraordinary ways. I believe that we are at a time in history when in the not too distant future they will call this before as each one of us wakes up to what's possible, that infinite possibility inside every single one of us and picks up our opus and march forward with courageous action. We can and we will change the world. But not a moment before we change ourselves. And the reason I believe that is the first time I had that idea I was sitting on a park bench in downtown East Vancouver, a broken, homeless drug addict. Thanks. Every single one of us in this room goes through the tough stuff. We, we face it at home, we face it in our relationships, we face it at the doctor's office, we face it in the marketplace, we face it with the ever-shifting sh avalanche of technology that's coming at us at a, at a pace that it's hard to keep up with. But here's what I understand today, is that tough times shape us. They shape the economy, they shape business. They get rid of the bad things and they open the door for new things. They help us build character and discipline and wisdom and patience and gratitude. In 1989, this was a picture of me. I was a, a homeless heroin addict living six blocks from here. I was one of those guys that you'd see pushing a shopping cart around the downtown east side of Vancouver. I'd completely cycled out. I'd made every wrong choice that a young person could make. And I, and I was a heroin addict. I was one of those, those heavy users that you see come in and out of the emergency room. It just didn't really have a will to, to do anything. I was just caught in this vicious cycle of addiction. I believe that having a sense of humor is one of the most powerful weapons that we can take to adversity today. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. He says, you're allergic to alcohol. My goodness, what kind of reaction do you have when you drink? I said, I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> True story. Uh, <laughs> I walked across the stage. They called out my name. They said, Joe Roberts. Yeah, I know. I still didn't get a haircut, eh? <laughs> I graduated with a, with a 3.94 GPA. In less than 10 years, I went from that guy pushing the shopping cart in front of this hotel to being on the cover of McLean's Magazine and Canadian Business. What stood before him in that moment was a man with dirty matted hair, yellow teeth, scruffy beard, black fingernails, and clothes that I'd been wearing for a year. And he said to me, he said, there's more to you than you can see. Adversity introduces us to ourselves and it always says the same thing. There's more to you than you can see. I want you to turn to the person next to you and on the count of three, I want you to look at them and I want you to say, there's more to you than you can see. Are you ready? One, two, three. And I'm thinking about what are different ways I can, from a leadership perspective, draw that out of them. Now, we're, we're challenged by behavior at every corner. But possibility is looking at someone and saying, not just seeing what is, but what could be. 
That guy that, that you see on the street, there's a possibility that they could be your keynote speaker 10 years from now. And so as a manager, I'm always looking for ways that I can draw out of that possibility pond, right? So if I don't have that mindset, I, I'm gonna lose going into it. If I'm going into it with a fixed mindset, like it's always been that way, it's always gonna be that way, then there's no possibility. I'm not creating a space for them to move into. Great coaches and leaders look at what's possible and then, and then try and draw their, 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 their players into that possibility. The model for success, choose what you wanna do, get busy doing it, and don't stop till you succeed. Problem is, is that even though the model for success is simple, human behavior is not. The reason why this is important is that I asked for help. Sometimes when we get jammed in, we live in the illusion of self-sufficiency. See, the greatest tragedy of our lives isn't that they end too soon, it's that we wait too long to be them because of fear. Fear is what holds us back. That's perfect. She says, I, I got a project for you. Will you come to Toronto? 